What's up YouTubers, we're back in the garage. Got the N54 project right behind me. Um, for those who are just tuning in and this is your first video, um, this is a full series and if you want you could go back and watch all the older videos. But today's video, we're gonna hook up some more items. All right, people, so right now I'm trying to tackle the relocation. Because of the um, intakes being on this side, we can no longer put the coolant reservoir on that side. We're gonna have to move it over to that side. So this is the original coolant tank. Right now I have a coolant tank from a 335D, which is a turbo diesel. And on that model 335, the coolant tank sits on this side. So. You can see how I got it mocked up here. Power steering, tank, charge pipe. And I bought this charge pipe from VRSF, specifically designed for the 335D reservoir. So it's shaped a bit different. And um, right now, my plan is this bracket over here is stopping this from sitting flush. When you look at the engine bay pictures from a 335D, you can see that this tab is actually bolted right here. I don't know what bolts there originally, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove this bracket here and see where it falls. The power steering is easy to mock up because you have a lot of flexibility in the hoses. Removing that bracket worked like a charm. That 335D bracket uh, coolant tank, it lined up perfectly with two existing holes in the car body. So now that it sits up perfect, the charge pipe doesn't interfere because remember I bought the 335D relocation charge pipe. And now all I have to do is make a bracket for the reservoir to stay in position right here from there to there and then I can extend this coolant hose from here to there and then the wire for the coolant level from there to there and remember this little guy right here used to run across the radiator and go over there so now it's gonna have a shorter path it's just gonna go from here to right here I cut that power steering bracket because I wanted to save this piece so I can hold those two coolant hoses that run along the side of the frame so they can stay secure. So I'm gonna clean this up a bit and run some paint on it and then we're gonna mount it back in the car. Okay, so this normally goes to the coolant reservoir. Um, so now I'm going to extend the hose using this. Basically I have this little coupler inside of this hose right here so now i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it right in the straight section right about here and then run it alongside this ac line and then bow to the coolant have your coolant tank here this piece goes on to the coolant tank so um, just line up the slot great we're missing the clip there's supposed to be a clip in here and I gotta go hunting for the clip but basically this is gonna clip inside of here
Okay, so this is the coolant hose coming from the thermostat. You see right here, I cut it to length and now I can just join this on the end of that and connect it with a hose clamp. You see the tank is in its final position. I'm probably gonna put a spacer under that tab back there. So $8 for this from the dealership. I picked up this little rubber o-ring. It goes inside of the charge pipe. I'm pretty sure VRSF, the company that makes this, they sent me one in the kit, but I have no idea where I put it. So I just went and got a new one. I'll try to take this off so you guys can see. It has a little channel in there and that's where you put the o-ring. And I have to tighten this after orientate it which way I want it facing and um, tighten these clamps over here. Trying to get this oiling, this little channel inside here. Okay, so it fits in there perfectly. That's how it goes. So, um, this is where the map sensor goes. I ordered from um, Burger Motorsports. Um, been reading on the forums and a lot of guys switch to an N20 map sensor because from what I understand the stock 335 map sensor is um, 2.5 bars which converts over to a certain amount of PSI you can't raise the boost pressure past the limitations of the map sensor so that's what I'm waiting on so I need that and um, there's a big clip here so let's try to put this on the car and see what's up. Alright, so uh, the charge pipe has these two little um, bungs in there, I guess to do meth injection or some type of port injection. But um, I'm not going to be using these. So they're really loose right now, so I'm going to put some thread locker. And I'm going to lock them in. A nice bead. I'm not gonna go crazy with it because this is the red stuff. Maybe if I want to take it out in the future, it won't give me a hard time. All right. So how we looking? I got the intercooler right there on the floor this is a step style intercooler got some attachments for the what do you call that the outlet and got some attachments here on the charge pipe so currently I have a few things to do so I'm going to uh, drill a hole here and put another piece of metal so that way both of the mounting bolts are actually holding on to this bracket because the way it is right now, only this one is attached. And um, we're going to have to find a spacer for the coolant level bottle. Because there's a gap right there between the tab and the mounting surface. So we're going to do that. And I already extended the coolant hose all the way over here. I have to extend the level sensor wiring. Because originally it was on that side. And I've been doing some research about these two little bottles right here. So some people says it doesn't have an effect on the motor at all. Some people run one bottle. Um, I think BMW put it there for a reason. Some people say they over engineered it. But I'm going to try to rock it like that. Got the two intakes split away from each other. But we'll see what happens. Maybe in the future I'll take them off. I'll delete them. What's up YouTubers, Blueprint Auto here, and we're back with the M54 project. 
right now it's snowing outside there's supposed to be a big snowstorm so I'm just trying to get as much done as I could <sighs> cut that